happy little games. Hello everyone, Patman QC here, thanking each and every one of you for coming back to check out the games of the Atari Lynx. There are quite a few of you that were requesting a follow-up, but one user in particular, by the name of Rosar Smacko, gave a very generous donation and requested that I do it, so I had to put it on the fast track. In my previous video, I already covered around 15 or so titles, and there are only 70 officially released games, not counting homebrew. I'll get to as many as I can, so strap in and get ready for the ride. These are the games of the Atari Lynx. The first game on the list is Battlezone 2000, which is based on the original Battlezone arcade game. This game started out life similar to Tempest 2000, which featured an updated version of the classic arcade game, but for whatever reason, it was changed back to the original Wireframe Classic. Don't let these dank, unfilled green lines fool you as the gameplay is fast and the animation is nice and smooth. You go around in your tank, destroying other tanks and obstacles as you attempt to clear wave upon wave of enemies. The original arcade game featured two joysticks to control your tank, but the controls here have been converted quite nicely. The developers decided to include a huge easter egg in the form of the original version of Battlezone they created for the Lynx, which is the 2000 version. This includes all new levels as well as updated graphics with full color sprites and scenery. It's crazy they decided to make this version hidden because it is a full-fledged game. It is a bit tricky to access as you have to press the option button twice and then reset the links. The game supports four players simultaneously via the com links cable. Overall, this is a fantastic game and with the hidden easter egg makes it a worthwhile purchase for any fan of the original arcade game. If you've never played the game of Lemmings, then you are in for a treat. The Atari Lynx version is fantastic despite having to use the control pad instead of the traditional mouse as you would find in the home computer ports. The graphics are a bit on the small side, but everything for the most part is easily identifiable. Lemmings is a puzzle strategy game in which you have to guide a group of young and dumb lemmings through a number of obstacles helping them to make it to the exit. There are eight different skills for each lemming that can be selected depending on the level and the difficulty. There are climbers, diggers, ones with parachutes, etc. There are also bombers that will explode after a five second timer destroying themselves as well as any landscape which is nearby. There is also a nuke option which destroys all the lemmings on the screen allowing you to restart the level. The sound effects are great with a few voices from the little guys. There is even a nice intro screen and good music to boot. If you are looking for a little nine innings of fun, check out Baseball Heroes. This is an arcade baseball title in which you play as fictional teams as you attempt to score the most runs and win the game. The graphics are absolutely fantastic with large detailed sprites and a few different viewpoints. However, with these viewpoints comes an increase in difficulty when attempting to hit the ball. It's something that takes practice, but once you get it down, it makes the game obviously much more enjoyable. The sound effects are stellar with lots of voice and fairly clear audio. There are a few modes in the game, including Exhibition, Series Final, Home Run Derby, and more. Yay!
I have to make special mention of the prototype of the arcade game Relief Pitcher which is available on the links for your playing pleasure. While this is only a prototype, it features a lot of digitized speech with some fairly accurate play-by-play -by, -play by legendary Cardinals announcer Jack Buck. It's not like the motor mouths of today's games, but for 1992 it's not too bad. It also plays a bit faster than Baseball Heroes, so if you've never seen the game in the arcades, check out the Lynx version. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, it's a great day for baseball. It's the Dusters versus the Speeders. Swing on a line drive into, he throws his second. There goes the runner. Checkered Flag is an excellent Grand Prix racing game that has support for up to four players. The game features a number of race modes including practice, single race, and tournament. You can also adjust the options at the beginning including changing which course you race on, number of laps, color of your car, etc. The graphics are really good with the Lynx scaling ability put to good use with the smooth roadside scenery and winding tracks. The sound effects are excellent with a decent intro tune and some nifty engine sounds. There are over 8 tracks for you to play through as well. Lots of fun was had with this game. One of the most technologically advanced games for the Lynx comes in the form of Warbirds. Not only is it a sign of just how powerful the Atari Lynx is, but it's also built around a fun arcade style game. Any Amiga fan will instantly remember the game Wings by legendary publisher Cinemaware. Wings was a World War I arcade flight sim in which you have to do a number of missions. Warbirds is another World War I aerial combat arcade title which sees you having to pilot a biplane fresh from the factory. Upon starting up the game you have a number of options at your disposal such as choosing unlimited ammo, unlimited damage, number of lives, etc. There are a number of game modes available such as 1 on 1, 2 on 1, and 3 on 1. The big one though is facing off against Snoopy's arch enemy, the Red Baron. He is without a doubt an outstanding pilot plus he makes a pretty good pizza as well. The graphics are phenomenal with a number of different viewpoints so you can see exactly where your enemy is at all times. You also have real working gauges that you have to take note of such as your altimeter and your compass. Every so often you will have to land your plane to replenish your supply if you have it set to limited ammo. The best of the best in terms of gameplay for this one in my opinion is linking up with other players for a little head to head dogfight action. Up to 4 systems can be connected but personally I have only done 2. If you have done more than that let me know in the comments down below. This is another fantastic game for the little potato that could. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure sees the duo embark on their most excellent adventure as the two beautiful babes from medieval England, Joanna and Elizabeth, have been kidnapped by the heinous Grim Reaper. The two dudes have to use the circuits of time to find the princesses and save the day. 
Unlike other Bill and Ted games, players get the choice of controlling either Bill or Ted. The goal of the game is to collect all the musical notes that are scattered around each time period. You start the game in Old Egypt, but you can travel to the next time frame by collecting 16 musical notes for your guitar or a phone book page. While everything is viewed with a top-down perspective, the graphics are nicely detailed with excellent use of color on the screen. Some of the points in time you travel to include Rome 70 BC, Europe 1700 AD, Texas 1800, and San Dimas 2691. The gameplay is very reminiscent of some of the JRPGs, especially Zelda A Link to the Past, which is not a bad thing. You can either walk or run, but keep in mind there is no fire button, so you either need to escape the monsters or use whatever special items you collect along the way. This is where the puzzle elements kick in. Different objects have different results, so it's a lot of trial and error, but the puzzles are really not too difficult. The sound effects and music are really good, and the controls are perfectly fine. Thankfully, the game does use passwords. Again, if you are a fan of the Zelda series, then you'll know what to expect here. Another spectacular arcade conversion for the Atari Lynx is the game Rygar. Most fans of this game are familiar with the NES title, which took the basis for the arcade game and expanded upon it greatly. I always preferred the arcade game over the NES with its fast gameplay and slick graphics. When this game was in the arcades in 1986, the one thing that stood out to me next to the crazy disc armor was the awesome sun in the background. That has stuck with me all these years later and thankfully it's been included as well. This is a side-scrolling platform game that was initially created by Tecmo. You take on the mantle of the legendary warrior as you make your way from left to right destroying everything in your path. You have your trusty, but perhaps rusty, disc armor, which is a shield with a long chain attached to it. Although the game was converted to a number of home systems, including the Sega Master System and various 8-bit computers, the Atari Lynx version is one of the best on the market. The graphics have been ported over faithfully with parallax scrolling and smooth animation. The sound effects and music are a bit so-so, but at least it has the arcade game's familiar tunes. It controls great feeling just like the arcade game. If you are a fan of this game, you should definitely check it out. Another launch title for the Atari Lynx is Electrocop. The game revolves around you taking control of a robot created by the mega corp known as the Electrocop. The criminal mastermind known as the Criminal Brain has kidnapped the president's daughter, so it's up to you to penetrate his massive fortress and rescue her. This is a third-person shooter in which players have one hour to traverse the various levels facing off against different dastardly enemies. To get between each level, players will have to hack into various computer systems. While inside the systems, the player can learn more about the programs that disable robots, the robots themselves, and even games you can play. There are three games available, including an Asteroids clone and a Breakout clone. You have to watch out for the electrified floors, explosive traps, and wave upon wave of enemies. Your primary weapon is your gun, but you also have smart bombs that will destroy all nearby enemies. Your character also has the ability to duck and jump. The graphics are fantastic, making excellent use of the hardware, providing some really cool scaling effects. Sound effects are pretty good, and the gameplay is fun, although it can be a bit repetitive and mundane at times. 
There is a rumor that still persists to this day that games started out life as a 3D follow-up to the extremely successful Impossible Mission series. Programmer Greg Omi can neither confirm nor deny this as he simply can't remember. However, the gameplay is very similar although Electrocop does use a gun. I can recall seeing Pit Fighter in the arcades for the first time and how impressive it looked for a 1990s arcade game. I had a lot of fun playing this game against friends and even more so when the excellent Sega Genesis version was released only a couple of years later. Now the game has not aged very well and it gets a lot of hate online for some reason, but that doesn't mean that the Atari Lynx version is not good. It's a faithful adaptation of the arcade game, although stripped down just a bit. The game is very bare bones as the introduction scenes are missing completely and the menu screen has been stripped out as well. However, the core gameplay remains the same in which you are a fighter attempting to knock out the competition and win as much money as possible. You have three fighters to choose from, including Buzz, Ty, and Kato, each one with different skills and moves. Each fighter has a punch, a kick, and a unique super move, but these do take off a little bit of energy. The game also includes a number of weapons such as knives, barrels, motorcycles, and more. There is even a hidden power pill which gives you a significant energy boost as well as invincibility for a short period of time. Similar to the arcade game, the fighters will scale in size the closer they get to the camera and that feature is present here in the Lynx as well. The gameplay is fairly smooth but the sound is a bit of a snooze fest. Whereas the arcade game featured loads upon loads of digitized voices along with various grunts and groans, this game does not. The reason being is that the programmer used up every drop of memory and had no room to fit anything else in. By the way, the reason this game feels like the arcade game so much is because the programmer was able to reference the original arcade source code. Something that was not in the arcade game, at least as far as I can recall, is getting trapped in the corner and having your life essence drained out of you similar to being married. With this game, I got trapped more than a few times and there was nothing I could do. You are given 6 credits to play through which isn't a whole lot but I was able to get to stage 7 even after not playing this version for a number of years. If you ever wanted to frolic on the beach without getting sand kicked in your face, then Malibu Bikini Volleyball is just for you. I played a few fun volleyball games over the years and this one is right up there towards the top. This is a 2 on 2 arcade volleyball game that is a lot of fun to play. The graphics and presentation are top notch and even uses some nice scaling effects on the title screen. There are some little touches such as a flying plane in the background. There are a number of options when setting up the game including the ability for head to head action. There is a little bit of voice but the star of the audio is the music which is fantastic. The only downside is that your AI teammate plays really inconsistent. Sometimes they will hit the ball and other times they will let it drop like a fart in church. It controls really well though, so if you like these types of games, you might want to check it out. Despite the small screen size, Ms. Pac-Man is another great arcade conversion for the system. 
What you see is what you get, but everything from the arcade game has been retained, including all four boards as well as the intermissions. Even though the screen size is small, everything is easily identifiable and it controls like a dream. I'm glad they didn't go with the option of zooming everything in just a bit and having the screen scroll as personally I always hated this effect. My only quibble is that the sound effects could have been a bit better, but other than that, it's a great conversion of an absolute classic arcade game. Sticking with the arcades just for a moment, another stellar conversion is Joust. If you've never played this game, the object is for your knight to ride a giant bird, knocking other knights off of their steeds. You have to do this by dropping on top of them since if both lances were at the same level, then you would simply bounce off of your opponent. If you manage to knock him off, then they would drop an egg, which you would have to collect before it hatches, spawning more knights. It's a fun, classic game that has been represented well here on the links. Yes, the sprites are small and everything looks a bit basic, but it still plays just like the arcade game. The sound effects really shine here using sampled sounds straight from the arcade game. They sound really good and this was something that was missing from Ms. Pac-Man. Despite only having just over 70 titles, the Atari Lynx has a wide variety of sports games available and that includes Jimmy Connors Tennis. This game sees you take to the tournament circuit beating all the other players and finally taking on Jimmy Connors himself. The graphics are fantastic with some fairly smooth animation. The controls are nice and tight with you having a number of options when it comes to controlling your player including forehands, backhands, volleys, etc. Similar to Baseball Heroes, it does take a bit of practice to get the timing down, but once you do, it's game on. Out of all the games I've played for the Lynx, the sound effects and voices in particular are some of the best I've heard. There are a number of sound bites littered all throughout the game. There are also loads of options in the gameplay such as singles, doubles, gender of your player, court surface, and more. The only downside I encountered was that similar to Malibu Bikini Volleyball is that sometimes your doubles partner is suffering from glaucoma because at various times they will be swatting at flies instead of actually hitting the ball. Otherwise, this is a fantastic game and to be honest, I haven't had this much fun whacking balls since I was 13 years old. Hi, I'm Jimmy Connors. Welcome to the Bella Country Club. 30. Love. Forty. Love. If you like fast-paced puzzle games, then Chip's Challenge is just what Dr. Feelgood ordered. This is a top-down, tile-based puzzler where you assume the role of Chip McCallahan, a geeky and freaky individual who has met Melinda the Mental Marvel at the school science lab. You have to complete Melinda's Clubhouse, which is a number of puzzles in order to gain membership and, quite possibly, the key to her heart. The game takes place across 140 levels in which you have to push blocks and collect computer chips while dodging enemies and traversing the various mazes. The puzzles actually start out pretty easy and then gradually ramp up in difficulty over the course of the game. The first eight levels are training levels that introduce you to the puzzle components giving you a chance to get comfortable with the game's concepts. In addition to the monsters, thieves, tanks, and different traps you also have to be wary of the time limit. 
The graphics are excellent with nice use of color and smooth animation. The sound effects and music are really good and the controls are perfect. This was actually a launch title for the Atari Lynx and if you've never played it, you owe it to yourself to do so. Yes, I know, I've covered a lot of arcade conversions when talking about the Lynx, but A, it's what I like, and B, most of these turned out really well. Xenophobe is another excellent conversion of the arcade game of the same name. This is an action platform game in which you have to defeat all the aliens before the timer runs out. You'll be blasting and zapping these creatures over 23 multi-level space stations. You have your choice of a number of characters to play as, but honestly, they all feel pretty much the same. These include Mr. Ease, Dr. Quack, Mr. Fog, U2RB2, Colonel Truth, Doctor's Orders, Colonel Chicken, Mr. Embrace, the illustrious Dr. Pink, and even the Snotter Pillar. You are allowed four lives, but if you are playing a multiplayer game, players keep continuing until all nine characters have been used. There are a few different ways to finish your mission. Obviously, the best way is to destroy all the Xeno invaders and save the space station. Another possibility is that you don't clear the space station in time and the Xenos overrun it. And finally, if all else fails, you can use the self-destruct code to destroy the space station and everything in it. You have to use elevators to move between floors, but you can also pick up weapons to help you take care of that alien scum. The enemy assortment includes critters, pods, tentacles, and the hideous snouter pillar. Thankfully, the weapons you pick up do provide unlimited ammunition, so you can use either your fists, phaser, laser rifle, bombs, and more. The arcade game was actually split into three sections allowing for three simultaneous players. The Lynx does allow simultaneous play with the Comlynx cable. This version turned out pretty good and time after time this was one I would always find myself going back to play. <laughs> Ninja Gaiden, or Shadow Warriors as it was known in various parts of the world, is another fantastic scrolling beat-em-up that was based on the arcade game. Keep in mind, this is different than the NES series of titles, although Ninja Gaiden 3, the NES version, was released on the Atari Lynx as well. However, this game features the same excellent graphics that was found in the arcade game with large sprites and fairly smooth gameplay. You can punch, low kick, high kick, and bounce off the walls in order to take down the various enemies in the game. You can even grab lampposts which will allow you to perform a swinging kick on the baddies. There are also breakable objects which will sometimes include a ninja sword that is extremely powerful. The attention to detail in the graphics are second to none with the number of unique levels you have to fight through. You do have to face a rather large boss or even a pair of bosses at the end of each level. Any game that features Road Warrior knockoffs gets a big A plus in my book. The sound is pretty good with each boss having their own unique music. Speaking of different music for the various bosses, the Road Warrior knockoffs also have a version of I Am Iron Man playing in the background. I Am Iron Man was the original music for the Road Warriors in the NWA. <music> 
As far as the arcade's presentation goes, the only thing missing is the attract scene, but otherwise, everything else is there, including the cutscenes and the ending screens. The arcade's continue screen is present, with your character being strapped down while the saw blade slowly lowers down as the timer reaches zero. I've said it before and I'll say it again, another fantastic conversion for the Lynx. There you have it, everybody. Even more games of the Atari Lynx. I know there are a lot I didn't get to, so if you want to see a part 3, let me know in the comments down below. Once again, I want to thank everybody for requesting this, especially super user Rosar Smacko for his very generous donation. So if you've never had the chance to play any of these games, be sure and check them out. You'll be glad you did. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you can always click the donate button up above. Thanks everyone for watching.